Hello everyone and welcome to the Alchemical Mindset. I am Renz and this is a partial Dream Reader edition, but it is the Alchemical Mindset. So I want to thank everybody for joining me. Thank you for subscribing. Those who become members on, and those who are patrons on our Patreon account, every full moon we have our full moon chat on Zoom. So please, you guys, if you want to be a part of that, become a member so that we can reach those higher levels of alchemy as well as you can become a patron on patreon so i want to thank everybody for being here hit that thumbs up button it helps with the youtube algorithm I want to get the channel up to 10,000 uh, subscribers by the end of by october 15th which is my born day and we are going to continue to grow this channel so i thank you 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 so i had a bit of a dream the other day and it was interesting because I know that this dream was prompted by the fact of a study that I've been doing for the last few weeks concerning forgiveness, right? Concerning forgiveness. So in the dream, in the dream, there was a man and a woman who don't know each other, but they are, I am the only connection between this man and this woman. And, and the man and the woman were together and they uh, came to a different business of mine. I still had this one, but I also had another one. And they came together and the, the woman went next door to like a nail shop while the man uh, came into the store. And although he had wronged family members of mine in the past and uh, I'm gonna say respectfully wronged me, uh, he came in, he had changed his life he was trying to convey to me how he changed, changed his life, but he tried to convey it in a religious way and, tr and in that religious way tried to push me to that religion as well. So um, instead of me recognizing the change that he has made in his life, recognizing that, what I recognized was the spiritual push that he was trying. The the you are you need to come to my spirituality and i realize now that many people when they make a spiritual change in their life they are gung-ho they are like in it to win it and everybody has to know everybody needs to know so i didn't even take that into consideration so i i i, I pretty much intellectually brought him to an understanding that what he's saying will never penetrate you know, my mind, my spirit, my body, my consciousness, it would never penetrate because it is still based on the illusion of what you call facts to be truly just belief. What I could not see is the energy around him of a different person that he has become. I was still holding him on to his past. Now, his past was something that is abhorrent. Something that, although you may forgive them, it is never something that you will allow them back into your circle. It is something you will never allow them to be a part of your life. It is something that you will keep them at not a 10 foot pole distance, but a mile, two mile, three mile pole dif distance. So, but I refuse to forgive. And then the dream shifted and I was in this location. Matter of fact, I was back there. And the woman came in, rushed in, jumped and hugged me really, really tight and apologized. Like heartfelt apology filled with remorse and just truly authentic. I told her that I forgive her, but I was cold. My heart was cold, my mind was cold, it was okay. And she left, and that's all there was to it. But I sat there, although I received this apology, I felt worse, I felt bad. I realized over the last few days as I contemplated this dream, that the big significance of the dream is the fact that I've been researching and oftentimes you will find that your dreams are your subconscious mind giving you a deeper understanding of what you are uh, 
uh, uh, learning, what's coming in, the information you're downloading. I've been recently studying and under, coming to a deeper understanding of forgiveness and the power of forgiveness, the true higher power of forgiveness. You see, there have been studies that have shown that when a person, when you forgive, when you truly forgive, now we all know the idea that forgiveness is for you, but this concept has been taken to an even higher level of understanding. We're finding that when you forgive someone, it actually increases your brain activity. It actually allows you to, to as people were saying for the conjunction, get superpowers. When you forgive someone, the level of stress, the cortisol in your body decreases. When you go through a process of true forgiveness, you are able to experience higher emotions. You are able to experience truer love. You are able to experience truer excitement. You are able to experience truer fascination, truer um, gratitude. All these things of life that we seek out for become more intensified when you truly forgive someone. So what does that look like? What is truly forgiving someone? Well, truly forgiving someone is not forgive and forget. It is not. It is well beyond forgive and forget. It is not forgive and protect. It is not the idea that I'm going to forgive you, but I'm going to protect myself from you. Truly forgiving someone includes forgiving and forgetting. It includes forgiving and protecting. But more importantly, it is forgiving and loving. Forgiving and loving. Now, this is not to say that the gentleman must be let into my life ever again. It is not to say that. It is not to say that the woman must be let into my life ever again. It is not to say that you put yourself in a position where you now have to be involved with the person. There are certain people that I have to go through this process with. They can never be in my life because they don't exist on this plane of existence anymore. So they can't come into my life. But at the same time, there are those who I forgive and love that cannot be a part of my life. So what does forgive and love mean? Forgive and love is to forgive the person for whatever activities that they did against you, whatever insulted you, whatever um, they did to abuse you. Uh, if you, you were molested as a child, forgiving that person for the molestation. Forgiving them for what they did to you, forgiving them for the harm, forgiving them for the trauma that they that they that they gave you. And yes, it is freeing. It is freeing for you. You come to a state where you're not walking around holding on to the shame of it all. It is forgiveness. It is forgiving yourself. Forgiving yourself. Let's let's let's, let's, let's rewind this a bit. The first forgiveness must be. Forgiving yourself for any and all things that you have done that has hindered your life, that has hindered the life of others, for all thoughts or negative energy that you've given to people, that you've given to yourself, for holding yourself as a hostage, for abusing yourself, whether it's through finances or through your body or through your affections towards yourself. If you can't love yourself, then how can you love someone else? So forgiving yourself, if, you, if you've done things to a person, if, to, I have been on a crusade of late. I have contacted many people that I felt I did wrong. I felt that I had a part to play in uh, making their life not as grand. I've been on this crusade to apologize to them. And although the apology has been well, well received, it has given me so much more happiness and joy. But I'm realizing, and what I realize is that not only did I have to forgive myself, I had to ask myself, and this is the next stage of forgiving and love, and it starts with you. Why? Why did I break up with this person 
when they really didn't deserve it? Why did I blast verbally this person when they really didn't deserve it? Why did I blame this person for, I well, just admit it, blame this person for a death in my family that they didn't deserve it nor was it their fault? Why? Why did I do those things? And I had to look inside myself to discover why. Why? What were my fears that caused me to leave this person? What was my lack of patience? My lack of understanding? What was my ego? What was whatever it was, my rationale, my reason, my hurt, my pain that I had that caused me to not be what I should have been to these people? What was it uh, about my life, about my decisions that didn't cause me to be a better father to my children? Um, what, what was it? Why? Dig into the why. And the more I dug into the why, it made me understand and more acceptable to love me more, to love me deeper than I already do. So when you look at a person that you have to forgive, when I look at this man that came into my business, why did he do the things he did? Why did he personify the behavior that he personified? Why did he disrespect the honor of my family the way he did? Why? What was it? What things? And I and I had to, even though I he, he's not going to tell me and I'm not going to go and search him out because he's alive today and I'm not going to go search him out to discover this why. If you can and feel that you should do that, then you go ahead. But I had to think to myself, what insecurities caused him to think that way? What things did I do within the situation that caused for me to maybe step on his toes and feel like he had to bolster himself up? Uh, and shine, you know, in moments where it wasn't for him to shine, right? What what did I do? And 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 but why? What was in his upbringing? What was his family system like? What what abuse uh, traumas that he may have experienced? Why? I had to think of his why, not to give him an excuse, but so that I have a better and deeper understanding and I can relate so that there is some empathy and or empathy and or sympathy that can be included into my understanding so that I can love him as an energetic being that was divinely created. This woman and many others, why? Why did the young lady when I was 14 decide she just wanted to slap me to see what my responses would be? And when I tried to leave, she kicked the door out of my hand and forced me to push her away, which made me hate myself for a bit. Why, why would she do that? Why would she get into a mindset thinking that that was the right thing to do or that that was some form of love? Why on separate occasions for no apparent reason that I could think of then would a woman cheat on? What was the peer, peer pressure that caused one woman to cheat on me from her friends? What was the peer pressure? What were the issues surrounding each situation? Why, 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 why when I expressed that I was not having children, why? Do you get involved with me and then a few months later, five months later, start wanting and desiring and pushing to have children when it was expressed in the very beginning, when it was made very readily apparent, when it was surgically done to ensure that it would not happen? Why would you still get involved with me so that I can forgive the person for taking that time, for taking my time? for getting me emotionally involved, for allowing me to become engrossed in their life. Why? And they all, all for it to fail when they knew from the beginning, just like I have known from the beginning of some relationship that they were not forever. Why? I dig into the why. When I understand the why, I can sympathize more. I can empathize more. It causes me to love them from afar, 
but to have a loving heart towards that person, to have good love heart energy. You see that heart chakra is blocked by your past pains and grief and fear of love. In order to open it, you have to be willing to love. Loving is not always romantic. It can just, love is just love, right? It's just love. So when the woman who claps me, she represents all women that I've been you know, involved with either in romantically or friends wise or any of all things. Like one of my friends, former friends rather, just separated herself from our friendship. And I said, why, why, why? I understand the situation she went through. She was embarrassed. She was ashamed. And she felt like, I, I guess, uh, in my mind, I'm thinking she felt like I I would, I would look down upon her, that I didn't respect her anymore, or maybe um, I, would, I would always have it in my mind of the decisions that she made that I was against in the very beginning, and, and, and I would hold that against her. Maybe that's why, and, and she just went internal with that without allowing the opportunity to see if that's how it would be. And so because of that, I just, I, I love her. I forgive her for ending the friendship so abruptly, and I love her for being, you know, for who she is, that she's a great person. And if ever we were to come in contact, I will make sure she understands that you you never had to break the friendship. I will always have my, my friendly love for you. So um, we have to just the, dig deep into the why, why, so that we can forgive and love them. We can love them as energetic beings created, divinely created. We don't have to be in contact with them. We don't have to befriend them again. We don't have to join in any level of a relationship with these people again. But for your own sake and your own superpowers of forgiveness, it may, it takes you to a high level of understanding. It makes you better. It makes you greater. It frees you up of stress. It frees your consciousness up. It allows for your heart energy to flow better. It allows for your third eye, for all your energy to move at a higher plane of existence so that you can become a greater version of yourself. If for no other reason but for your own selfish reasons to become a greater version of yourself, learn how to forgive, forget, forgive, and um, love and I just the other third would just fell out my head <laughs> but forgive and forget forgive and protect and forgive and love so we want to learn how to do all of those things so that we can continue to become the greatest versions of ourselves why because your greatness is non-negotiable so we have to free ourselves to be ourselves and with that I thank you guys please continue to support the channel become a member subscribe, do all those things, share the video, and y'all have a great day. Good journey, good vibrations.